A couple of B Company blokes appeared on the truck coming back, and they came back of awful stories about a great horde of Japanese assaulting them at the other end, throwing their kids. And they all came to Kokoda, and the uh, Amis from Australia, they told us, one better we leave our village and went away to bush. <laughs> Yeah. She said uh, they were all scared, scared and they cannot move. Only the brave men could move around and look for food. But the ladies and the young kids, they were all hidden. Natives at this time were doing marvellously well. They were fantastic. And uh, we had a minimum of food, but it, it turned out that it was sufficient anyway, and this was all supplied by the natives. Of course, the position got more serious when the wounded started to come back. Hundreds of wounded men had to be carried back over the mountains to be treated in dressing stations or field hospitals spread along the track. Many of them would have died were it not for the Papua New Guinean stretcher bearers, famously known as Fuzzy Wuzzy Angels. Their devotion to Australian soldiers was often heroic. Natives came over, put me on the stretcher, and carried me out. There was a river down below, and they they went down to the river and and they brought a drink, a drink of water over in a leaf, and put it down my mouth. And they were so gentle. The legend has it that the Fuzzy Wuzzies volunteered their services, came down from their mountain villages with garlands of flowers and their muscles to drag the Australian wounded out of the battlefields. In reality, this didn't happen. The Fuzzy Wuzzy Angels were indentured labor, slave labor, effectively. They were corralled into pens. They were loaded up with supplies to carry over the track. And then they were dispatched to the battlefields to drag out the wounded and to carry them back over the mountains. After Ishirava, only 30% of those fuzzy wuzzies turned up for the job. 70% went AWOL. Oh, <laughs> The fellow that was in charge, he got us there one night and said, now look, if these fellas run away, I want you to shoot them. Shoot them dead, you know, because if you don't do that, they'll, they'll all bolt, you know. So we were amazed at that, but they stayed with us. Increasingly, some of the Fuzzies Wuzzies did so voluntarily, and we saw the legend born of that small number who could see that they wanted the war to be won by Australia. Carries the supplies. I will be over there. And also, those who were shot, yeah, we carry them also. The wounded soldiers, there are four people who are capable enough to carry those. Put on the stretcher and they have to put on the side sides and then they carry them, of course. And for the other things, like uh, cargoes, we have to carry one one because all in heaps. Oh, two years. Oh, the natives were great. They were good carriers. They were made to carry. They weren't volunteers, as you might, might believe. Our Angao chaps were slave drivers, really. They had to go from village to village, drop the stuff and get back. It was hard on them, and they done a mighty job. And if they didn't, they, 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 nothing wrong with them, they'd get a whack. Like, 
A lot of them went bush too, like you never hear about much of them. A lot of them went bush. We were, we were out of it with that. Never had them on the go to get the supplies to us.